Hey everyone, it's Lucy here. As you can see today, I have a very special guest with me on the show. And as you can see from the title of this video, Glendon actually passed 12 AWS certifications in 12 months. Glendon is an intern at AWS and throughout his internship, he was able to consistently prepare for AWS certifications. And so today we're going to be talking about all things related to certifications, how to pass different ones, and how to maintain the motivation to study for these certifications. We're going to get started off um, by Glendon introducing himself. So, hey Glendon, how are you today? Hey Lucy, thank you so much for having me on your channel. Hi everyone, I'm Glendon and I'm currently in my final year of college based in Singapore. So I go to Nanyang Technological University or NTU and I'm pursuing a Bachelor's of Computer Science and a Master's of Science in Technology Management. Uh, as mentioned by Lucy earlier, I'm currently on my second internship with Amazon Web Services or AWS with my current role as a prototyping engineer within the ASEAN prototyping team. In the past one year at AWS, I have set for and passed all 12 AWS certifications. Nice. Yeah, that's honestly such an impressive achievement. And it's very, very rare for people to, you know, pass all 12 certifications in the first place. Um, but for you to pass, you know, all 12 in um, 12 months, that's really impressive. So can you start by telling us a bit about, you know, your certification journey? When did you prepare and pass the first certification and all the way until the uh, final one? Yeah, for sure. So my, my journey began when I first joined AWS as a solutions architect intern during my third year of college. And that was last year in 2020. So back then, I was really new to the cloud and did not have any experience working with any cloud providers and much less developing on them. On top of that, it turned out that my internship project sat at the intersection between many AWS services. When I first sat down with my manager on my project brief, I recall hearing many AWS services being thrown around and I was scrambling to write them down so that I can read up on them afterwards. It was really overwhelming and I didn't know where to begin. It was then a colleague recommended for me to look at the AWS Cloud Practitioner Certification to get a good high-level overview of the array of the AWS products and offerings. So I went through the process of studying for the certification as a ramp up for my internship and felt that it provided me with a very good structure and curriculum of what I needed to know. So, after sitting for the Cloud Practitioner Certification, the scope of my project at work got more technical and I gradually felt that it would make a lot more sense for me to go for the certification that was reflected on my job title and that was the Solutions Architect Associate Level Certification. After the second certification, I realized I've built a pretty good routine of incorporating a couple of hours studying each day into my schedule and decided to keep going for it for the duration of my internship. Also, I have to provide a disclaimer that as I was working at AWS during this period of time, I was able to expand the cost of the certification as an incentive for employees to hone their skill sets. This is a huge factor for me as going for those technical certifications in cheap and this removes the financial investment that I have to consider. As I didn't have any experience with AWS prior, or any cloud experience for that matter, I approached the certification incrementally, starting from the foundation and certifications, followed by the associate level certifications, and finally, the professional level and the specialty certifications. I have also intentionally chose to go for the certification that has direct relevance to my project at work. So for example, uh, a project at work required me to spend hours and hours building AI ML projects on AWS SageMaker. I then took the opportunity to study for the AWS Machine Learning Specialty Certification at the same time to serve as a great complement. I observed that the theoretical knowledge from studying for the certification would help me enhance my understanding at work. And at the same time, my hands-on experience from building projects would help me navigate those challenging questions during the exam. So, taking a high-level overview of my journey, I passed my first AWS certification, the Cloud Practitioner Certification, on 14 July last year, and I passed my final AWS certification, the Advanced Networking Specialty Certification, on 2nd June this year. That brought, brings me to about 11 to 12 months for my entire cloud journey. 
Nice, 11 to 12 months, wow. So yeah, there was so much packed in that answer. And one thing that really stood out to me was that you decided to take every certification based on what you were sort of doing as an intern. So that way you can sort of directly apply what you've learned in the certification to the role as an intern. And yeah, I think definitely as an intern, it does motivate us to uh, be able to like study for these certifications because sometimes we can expense them as well. So yeah, that's honestly a benefit for us. Um, and so my next question is, you know, with each of these certifications, you gave us like a really good high level understanding of your journey and the sort of roadmap that you took. So I guess for every single certification specifically, how did you typically break down each one in terms of the way you approach them? So what tips do you have for students when they're first starting out in the cloud journey, let's say they're doing their Associate Solutions Architect exam or their um, cloud practitioner exam? How would you recommend approaching these sort of exams? Right, yeah, that's a good question. So before I talk about my approach to tackling or preparing for an AWS certification, I would like to first share about a mental model that I have surrounding the certification process. So um, it's a working thesis, but I believe that there are two key metrics that one can and should optimize for while embarking on their certification journey. A candidate can either number one, optimize for learning the content, or number two, optimize for passing the exam. And I really believe that a healthy blend of both is ideal, which serves as a framework for my approach to preparing for an AWS certification. At this point, I will usually follow a three-stage process when preparing for a new certification. And they are, number one, scoping the subject, number two, testing yourself, and number three, diving deep and clarify. And clarify. So for number one of scoping the subject, I will usually start by looking up the exam guide for the certification just to get a sense and scope of the curriculum of the exam. For AWS certifications, I would also recommend looking at the A-Cloud Guru learning videos as they provide a really good high-level overview of the subject in question. However, as stated in many forums and YouTube videos, simply by watching their videos will not be sufficient to pass the exam. At this stage, I will simply focus on getting a good high-level understanding of the different topics and domains before moving to the next stage. In stage two of testing yourself, I will now look into practice exams provided by different vendors like A-Cloud Guru, Wiz Labs, and Udemy, and will attempt to complete them slowly over a period of time. So when attempting practice questions, I tend to let the questions guide me to further read up on the different domains. If I chance upon a question that I'm unsure about, I will then look into other learning resources such as the AWS documentation, white papers, and even tutorials on YouTube in search for the answer. And as you can imagine, this iterative process is going to take a long, long time and it's going to be really painful. But I found that this method would allow the candidate to not only pass the exam, but also dive deep into actually understanding the content in order to reap the benefits from getting the certification. Nice. That's a really good learning suggestion because, you know, it's not just about passing the exam, but it's also about making sure you learn and retain all that relevant information along the way. So that's a really good approach. So my next question is, were there any challenges that you faced along the way when studying for certifications? It seems like, you know, you just seamlessly passed all 12 certifications, but I'm sure you have a lot of tips and takeaways from this whole journey that you can really share with students so that students can um, be aware of these potential challenges and also maybe know what to do if they also face a similar challenge. Yeah, for sure. Um, looking back in my past one year, I, I've observed that my biggest challenge faced during this journey would have to be the periodic dips of motivation where I felt really drained and burned out from studying for the certifications as it got really repetitive. So referencing the earlier framework that I mentioned, um, whenever you're doing an exam question uh, that you don't know, you would then have to spend about 30 minutes to an hour looking up the answer and understanding you know, what, what was exactly happening behind that question before moving towards the next question. And this process doesn't do very well for your morale if you, you know, go through a series of 10 to 20 questions that you totally have no idea about. And it was especially bad during busy periods at work where I felt really exhausted just from work and had to put in a couple of hours to study after work. I remember during those times, I would usually try my best to power through, but 
it got really bad. Uh, I would say about six months into my journey, and I had to take an entire month to rest and recuperate from taking certifications before coming back to it. So, I I guess a learning point that I have for this is it really helps if you have an actual intention and and goal for the certification. So as mentioned earlier, when I was doing the AWS Machine Learning Specialist Certification, I felt like it had direct impact and relevance to my work. So studying for it felt slightly more fast free because the purpose was very clear to me. Whereas when I was attending other certifications, such as the Advanced Networking Certification, when it didn't have any direct impact on my day-to-day work, it felt a lot more you know uncomfortable and a lot more dreadful going through that process. Thanks so much for sharing that. It's so interesting to hear because I, that's honestly like the biggest challenge that I face as well with motivation. Because sometimes, you know, you do see the benefits of getting AWS certified. There are quite a few benefits that we'll go into later on as well. Um, but motivation is a huge component. And it's, you know, sometimes when you do have to take that one month break, yeah, definitely recommend students take that so that you can you know, take a break and um, keep powering through your certifications when you feel recharged and relaxed. So, yeah, and also, as you mentioned, kind of knowing your why, so why you're preparing for exam, if it's relevant to your job, or maybe you're looking to um, gain a new job in AWS or um, just in the cloud in general, knowing your why would be very helpful as well. So yeah, really good insights there. So my next question, it's all about, you know, some myths that I've seen around AWS certifications. So sometimes you see in forums and even under my YouTube videos as well, I'll see in the comments, people ask me, you know, does getting this cloud practitioner certification mean that I can get a job in AWS? And so I really wanted to get your perspective as well on this. So, you know, what are some myths that you've seen with AWS certifications? Mm. And does being AWS certified guarantee you a job? Yeah, that's a good one actually. So. That's also a a very common misconception that I've observed is that getting AWS certification or being AWS certified in a particular domain would definitely guarantee you a job. And it's a pretty controversial statement, but I would say that it is largely untrue. So a a technical certification on your resume would probably win you some brownie points during the initial resume screening process. And there are also definitely jobs out there such as cloud consultants within the professional services industry that will require you to have at least one to three technical certifications on the platform of choice during your application. However, according to the interview process, hiring managers would usually introduce some form of technical assessment to ensure that you indeed possess the technical depth that's required for the job. And this is where it could get really dangerous if you have a technical certification on your resume but do not have the necessary knowledge to back that up. And lastly, um, I've had the, the luxury to meet many seniors and mentors within the industry that are not only experts in the field of IT, but even within the AWS cloud. Um, even being veterans in the industry, they actually do not hold any formal certifications. However, you know, you know, they, they really know what they are saying and they really know about the cloud extensively. And this goes to show that having a formal certification could be a proxy to your expertise but it might not be the the only indication for that technical acumen therefore as a closing i would say that an aws certification will not guarantee you a job but would definitely help you in the process of learning about the cloud and that knowledge would then aid you in your job search yeah Definitely very well summarized and I agree with honestly everything you said and yeah in my comments when people ask me that that would be something I sort of relate to them as well. It doesn't guarantee you a job but it does map out a really good learning pathway for you to get started with your cloud learning journey. And so you know talking about the benefits of AWS certifications, uh, what are the benefits in getting AWS certified? Yeah so my, my mental model of the benefits of being certified on a cloud platform has changed during my journey. So at the very start, I'm going to be honest, um, I assume that getting a certification would mean that you know you, you have a lot better job prospects, um, you would be a lot more attractive as a job seeker, and that frames my intention when going for my first few certifications. But I've soon learned that the biggest benefit of being certified actually lies in the process of studying for them. 
I feel like they provide a really good structure for someone who would like to get good within a specific domain. For example, if you are interested in cybersecurity, using the curriculum of the AWS Security Specialty Certification will be a very good starting point to be exposed to the different facets of security within AWS. And the actual certification itself upon passing simply serves as a bonus and documentation from that process. And there's also a reason why uh, AWS certifications are only valid for about three to four years upon passing. This is because we acknowledge that technology will constantly evolve and most of the theoretical knowledge that you learn today will probably not be as relevant anymore you know, three to four years down the road. So this reinforces the idea that um, getting the certification is one thing, but the value lies in the knowledge and content that you can pick up from that journey. Exactly. Yeah, definitely agree with that as well. And especially since in the tech industry, everything is changing so fast. That's also the reason why in your know, AWS certifications are only valid for a couple of years. The questions are always changing depending on the new services that are added and everything like that as well. So um, good benefits that you mentioned with AWS certifications. So I guess my final question is, for students who clicked on this video and they're interested in you know, also being like you, also passing 12 AWS certifications or 11 now because you know, the Alexa one has retired. So you know, all 11 certifications, what advice do you have for these students? I have two advice for them. And the first one would be, please don't. <laughs> so um, just to go on a side tangent, I often get this question from my friends that, hey, Glendon, um, if you were not interning at AWS, and you actually had to you know, fork out your own money to go for those certifications, will you actually go for all 12 of them? And my answer to that is I wouldn't because number one, it's really expensive. Uh, each certification ranges from about 150 to 300 USD. And if you do the math, uh, going for all 12 of them would mean you know, going to the thousands. Uh, on top of that, I feel like there's some degree of submodularity when going for the certifications. For example, the AWS Solutions Architect Professional Certification would actually cover most of the curriculum for the associate level certifications and even the cloud practitioner certification. Hence, if your intention is simply to focus on getting the content and learning about the cloud, then I would recommend taking a more frugal approach and go for the more challenging certifications from the beginning. However, if you do have the luxury to really go for all 12 of them, and my advice would be to have fun, uh, take them slowly, but with intent and be really consistent with your preparation. The amount of content for those certifications can get daunting and overwhelming, but as you spread them across a long period of time, they become a lot more manageable. Finally, um, this is also a very common advice from yourself. Uh, it helps to have hands-on experience to complement your study process. If possible, pick up a side project or even follow a YouTube tutorial just to see everything in action. Exactly. There's so many resources out there that give you that sort of hands-on lab experience and sometimes you don't have to be you know, aiming to pass every single certification to validate that knowledge. A lot of the time it's just you know, doing those free online courses out there more for your own understanding and your own learning. So yeah, really good call out there. And yeah, for students who do want to pass those certifications, hands-on labs is really a must. So thank you so much, Brendan, for sharing your experience today with you know, passing all 12 AWS certifications, but we also covered a lot of other topics, including you know, how students should get started, what are the challenges that you faced. Yeah, really enjoyed having you on the show today. And this is a lot of good tips that I'll take away as well, because I do eventually want to be able to pass all 12, um, probably not within 12 months, but you know, eventually. So <laughs> really good tips that you mentioned, and I'm sure a lot of the uh, viewers today would have gained a lot of insights from that. So thank you so much. I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for having me. See you guys.